Hi everyone. In this series of videos we're looking at how to use the Avada Builder elements. Today we're looking at how to use the countdown element. This element just keeps getting better and better, and it got some new dynamic options in Avada 7.3, which users of WooCommerce and the events calendar will love. For full details on that, check on the how to use the dynamic options in the countdown element video, linked here. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. The countdown element is a great tool to show a countdown to a specific event. Basically you add a date for the event, and the element shows a countdown in days, hours, minutes and seconds on the front end. Let's add one on this page on the freelancer demo to see what it can do. I'll imagine this freelancer is in desperate need of a holiday and wants to let everyone know. I've added a full width column, and I'll add the element here, but you can also add it in a smaller column and the element will display responsively. The first thing I need to do is add my event date in the countdown timer end field. You can type a date in the year, month, day format, or you can use the calendar icon to choose your date. If you don't enter a time, the countdown will count down to midnight on the day chosen. Again, you can add the time in the hour, minute, second format, or you can click the clock icon. Here you can either click the up or down arrows, or click on a value and choose from the various options. As I mentioned before, there are also now dynamic options that can be used for sales and events, so please check the linked video for a full rundown on that new feature. With this example, however, we're just using a simple date and time, and once that is set, we can see the countdown already working on the page. Now we can finish configuring and styling it. The next option is the time zone. Here there are two choices, the time zone of the site or the time zone of the user. Depending on the event, you might choose either. For example, if it was a physical, local event in the same time zone as the website, you would leave it on the time zone of the site. But if it was a global online seminar, for example, you might use the time zone of the user. For this example, it's on default, which in this case is time zone of the site, which is the correct one here. The next option for this element is layout. Here you can choose between floated or stacked. The default here is floated, so I'll just change it to stacked to show you what that looks like. This might be a better layout in a smaller column, or if you have long headings or subheadings, or just for a different look. For this example I might leave it on stacked. The next option allows you to choose whether you want to show weeks or not. If you leave it on the default of no, then the countdown calculates the weeks into days, and displays it that way. I'll just leave it on days. Below this is another option called Label Position. This controls the position of the date time labels, and you can choose from top, text flow or bottom. For this example I'll leave it on the default of text flow, but depending on your design choices top or bottom might work better for you. Then we find an option called Display when inactive. What this does is enable you to hide the countdown when it is over, or if you are using the dynamic data options, also before it has begun. The next two options are your text heading and subheading. You can add whatever text you want here, so I will add some relevant information. The heading will be the name, I'll call this Aussie Four Wheel Drive Odyssey, and I'll just preface that with some text in the subheading. Under this is the link URL option. If you add a link here, two more options will appear, one for the link text and a link target option. I'll add a link, and then add some text, and set the target to blank. In this stacked layout, this shows below the countdown timers as you can see here. There is then a margin option for controlling the margins around the element, and a radius option for controlling the radius of the corners. I'll leave the margins, but I'll set the radius to 10 pixels. Ok, the remaining options on this tab are the usual element visibility option, which allows you to choose whether the element is displayed on various screen sizes, and the CSS class and CSS ID fields, which allow you to further customise the element with custom CSS. Let's check out the background tab, and we can see it has four options, a background colour option, a background image option, and background position and repeat options. If you choose an image it will override the colour. As you can see here, the default colour for this element in this install is the red that has been used elsewhere, and I think that stands out well, so I will leave it as it is. Moving on to the Design tab, there are a whole bunch of options for styling the element. The first one is called Counterbox Spacing, 
and this controls the space between the counter boxes. The default here is 10 pixels, and I think that looks pretty good, so I'll leave this one alone. Following this is counter box background color, and here we can choose a color for the counter boxes. Again, I think the default of white is the right choice in this case. We can put a border on the counter boxes if we like, and if we do, we get to choose a border color, but for this one I don't think I want a border. Then we have a radius control for the actual counter boxes, and I might set this to 10 pixels to match the rounded corners on the element. After this we have counter box padding, and this is padding for the counter boxes. I think the padding is just fine, but this might become more relevant if I change the value in the next option, which is counter font size. The default value here is 20 pixels, but I might make it a bit bigger, let's say 30 pixels. I'll leave the counter text color on default, and I might change the counter label font size down a bit to 16 pixels, but I will leave it on the default color as well. Then we can change the heading and subheading sizes and colors if we want as well. I might increase the heading font size to 22 pixels, and the subheading to 16. Yeah, that looks good. Finally, if you've added a link, there is an option for the link text color. I would like this to stand out a bit, so I might change this to this bright yellow. Finally, there is the Extras tab, where we can animate the element onto the page if we like, but for this example, I'll leave it on None. Okay, that countdown is looking great. That holiday is getting closer every second. Okay, this concludes our video on how to use the countdown element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, Please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.